Hello and welcome to Animation Flash Chapter 9, uh, Lesson 3, and this is using code snippets. Now, continuing with what we've done so far, you have to remember that each one of these are set up in order for you to use certain code snippets. And uh, if you're actually going to use these in your own presentations and use these in your own animations, you would need to have to set it up on a, you know, the, the, you would have to have a certain graphics, you'd have to have a certain situation, all of these things would have to be set up. However, in our particular examples, they are already set up for them or for us, and we are dealing with specific draggable movie clips. Now, in the examples that we go through, I'm going to walk through the code and some of the instructions because I've already done it, um, but I do want to discuss and I'll work with. This is the working flash, and basically what we're doing is is we're taking a we're making this this object a drag and drop. So I'm going to left click on this object, and I'm going to um, totally zoom in when I where I shouldn't have. Okay, anyway, I'm going to left click on this object, I'm going to drag it down here, and I'm going to drop it. Now according to the code, it states that you're not, you shouldn't be able to then left click and hold in this thing and drag it upwards, but not, not an issue where we're concerned. I just want you to have the experience with actually moving these things. So, it says, uh, so we're going to close this, and then flash 9-27, uh, it says open save it as shapes, I've saved mine as working, whatever. It says drag the playhead through the timeline, two screens, the first screen is a button that will click jump uh, and playhead to second string. So basically what happens is here's my one screen, you'll notice that I have all my animation keys right here keyed to this particular screen and then if I go backwards this is my other one where I have the start button. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the start button. So in order to do that, I click on the start button itself. I'm sorry, I'm going to put code behind the start button. And it says display the properties panel, then type start button for the instance name. So here's start button. I've, I've clicked on this. I've gone to the properties. I've um, typed in the word start button. This is verified start button selected. Then click to go to frame and play in the code snippets on the stage. And double click to go to, go to frame and play in code snippets. So what I want to do is I want to make sure my actions window is displayed and then my code snippets is this button right here. So I'm making sure that I have the code snippets clicked on and then it ha it brings up these code snippets. So what I'm doing is I'm inserting a code snippet for the start button itself. Then what I want to do is I want to click to go to frame and play. So Hold on just a minute, then start button selected on the stage, then double click, go, go to frame and play in the code snippets panel, go to the actions panel to the center of the screen and resize it. Hold on just one minute. One of the things it talks about is verify the start button is selected on the stage, then double click, go to frame and play in the code snippets window. So what's happening here is we are um, in the timeline navigation, we're clicking the click to go to frame and play which is this bad boy right here and what it actually does is it's going to insert actual code so if I have once again I'm gonna kinda go through the process so you see it I have the start button selected um, I want to make sure I'm on frame one because that's where my my frame one action is I make sure my start is selected and then I want to pull up my actions window uh, to bring up my um, code snippet so here's my actions I'm on my current selection which is there I want to hit my code snippets I want to make sure I'm in my timeline activation and go to frame and play so I actually double click that and it inserts that information so um, you'll notice that it actually creates the items and then what I want to do is it says uh, I want to select five in the code and then type seven so go to and play seven so what's going on here just so you're aware of the code that I've inserted where this is concerned is it says oh, and notice I've done it twice I've actually put it up here so I insert it twice well so you could actually see it so I'm gonna delete that code this is the code that I just inserted. I changed it to 7 because 7 is a frame that you wanted it to go to. This is start button, which is the name of the start button itself. I'm going to add the event listener, mouse event click, and my flash glow 
click to go and play from frame three. So what happens is, is the function, here's the uh, flash click to go and play from frame three. That's the function it calls. And then it is a mouse event because it's a mouse event listener. It just says go to and play seven. And you'll notice the beginning part of this says stop. So as soon as it starts, it stops the animation to, so it doesn't go to the second window that has my items in it. And it says go to and play seven, meaning that it go it goes from here and goes to frame seven and then plays it. So the way that works in uh, execution is <laughs> I hit the start button, it goes here. So this is what uh, frame seven looks like. The action, which is stop, meaning it doesn't actually go through all my animation window. And then when I hit start, it actually goes to number seven. And that's what's going on right here. So that's that particular block of code. The next thing I want to do is I want to click my frame 7 which is my action right here. It says on the timeline to display the next screen then click the black square. So what I'm doing is I'm associating the code I'm about to insert with or the, the scripting I'm about to insert with that particular square. Then what I want to do is I frame display next. Now I want to make sure the properties are up and I want to make sure it's called square, which indeed it is called square. And I want to then go with my actions again. So I'm making sure I window, here's my actions. I want to make sure my code snippet button is clicked. There's my code snippets right there. I open my actions list arrow and the actions, the code snippets, click the button. I want to do drag and drop. So I'm basically what's going on is I'm including a drag and drop bit of code. So I'm going to double click on this so you can see it. Now I've already done the drag and drop, but I wanted you to actually see me insert it. So I'm going to delete what I just inserted and we're going to go with the information that I've already had. You'll see that line seven of the code, uh, line seven of the code adds a mouse down event listener, line seven, meaning that I'm waiting for the mouse down on the square because I've named this square, so I tell it what action to use. And when the mouse down event is clicked, I'm going to use a click to drag function, and I define what that is. So function flash click to drag to, which is this, is mouse event. It's going to return nothing, and it says square dot start drag, meaning it allows the square to begin the drag event. The next it says lines 9 through 12 of the code identify the functions. The one mouse pointer is over the square and the mouse point button is pressed. The square will be movable. That's basically what I said right here. Line 14 of the code right here uh, uh, adds a mouse up event listener to the stage, meaning that when I'm clicked on this, I drag it and I release it. It's waiting for that release. And then it says release to drop, meaning it drops that particular square in that location. And the way it's supposed to work is this stop drag means that if I then release it to drop after that point in time, it's not going to be able to be dra dragged drug again. So the way that works, if I'm looking at it, I do uh, control, test movie, in flash professional, I hit my start button, it then moves me here. If I left click and hold on the square and then I move it down right here, the way it's supposed to work is, oh, I'm done, I've moved it. Now if I move this back around, I'm not supposed to move it again. But the reality is I can. It didn't work quite right. Let me know if yours works one way or another. But the, the key part to these is making sure that you understand how to how to actually insert the scripting and how what's actually kind of going on in the scripting from there so you know what's going on. All right, well, um, that actually concludes Chapter 9, Lesson 3. We're messing with the individual code snippets. I will see you again for Lesson 9, Chapter 4, which it does deals more with variables and working with code variables and things along those lines. If you have any questions, feel free to field them to me directly, or, and then, uh, or you can wait and just however it works best for you, but I want to know if you have uh, any concerns or questions. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, have a good day, and I will see you in Chapter 9, Lesson 4.